And so today we're going to use a colorimeter. This one is an i1 display studio, uh, or like a color monkey. I forget what it's called. It has a bunch of different names. It's, it's fine. It is what it is. It's not the best one. And we're going to use uh, cow, what is it called? Display cow. We're going to use display cow to calibrate first the hard to calibrate monitor because it's going to be through Dimage Resolve to make it absolutely perfect. And then we're going to go ahead and calibrate the, the PC monitor just because it's nice. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to download Display Cow, which is free. You're going to pick up one of these, which are, they're not cheap, but it is what it is. And if you're color grading or if you do photography or something, it's one of those things you should have. I, I don't know how no else to describe it. So um, Display Cow comes up. First thing you want to do, it's going to probably just point to your regular display on here. You're going to want to fix that. So we'll do that second, the regular display second. We're going to go to Resolve because Resolve has its own built-in way of doing it that works with Display Cal. It works with a different one too, but Display Cal is the, is the free version. Yeah. Um, white level drift, that's for LED or else OLED panels. I don't have that. I'm not going to do white level or black level drift. i got to make sure that my color monkey is here. It's plugged in via USB. We'll say LCD generic. And then on here, you probably need to look up in the white papers of your monitors, what kind of uh, LCD monitors you have. I know mine are white LED. Um, this is a Samsung, so my PC one actually is a Samsung. This ASUS one is not, but it's white LED. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna go to calibration, and this is where things get really confusing and everybody has a different answer. Um, I'm just gonna be honest and say, I, don't, I probably don't know, but also that's probably okay. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna do white point as measured. You can also pick a white point and color temperature, but um, I think all monitors are supposed to be at 6,500, D65, you know, Kelvin, but I'm just gonna do as measured. White level, I'm gonna do 100 for luminance. I think these monitors can go a little bit brighter because uh, 100 is pretty dim, but again, we're in a pretty dim room, so it's not a big deal. Um, and that's gonna get measured. That's what this little icon here is. And we're gonna do tone curve gamma 2.2. I always mess this up because, uh, you know, most of the stuff you're working on is going to be Rec. 709, unless told otherwise. Um, Max, I think, are in the P3, DCI P3 color space, but for almost everything, almost everything broadcast, almost everything internet is Rec. 709. Uh, it is what it is. However, uh, most monitors, I believe, are Gamma 2.2. I don't know. I'm sure experts, if you're in the comments, light me up. Um, this is what I'm going to do. As measured custom, Gamma 2.2. And then profiling, uh, this is all a foreign language to me. So, and we're not going to do a 3D LUT because we're, we're going to set it up so that DaVinci sends the signal constantly to the monitor so that, again, this monitor is only talking to DaVinci Resolve through a Blackmagic Decklink card. I can show you that right now, actually. So we'll pull up preferences and video audio IO. So I have a PCI card in there that is the Decklink Mini Monitor 4K. That's, that's for real. Um, it's like 200 bucks. Uh, they make a, they make a Thunderbolt one. That's just 1080p. But if you have a PC, especially this is kind of the move. Um, yeah. So again, this monitor is just the PC's interface. And so it's not hundred percent trustworthy because windows could be doing something behind the scenes. My Nvidia graphics card could be doing something behind the scenes. This monitor over here is just talking to resolve through a Blackmagic Decklink card into uh, an HDMI cable that's adapted into uh, DisplayPort because that's the only way I can get 10-bit into this monitor. If you want to ask me about that in the comments, feel free to. It took a lot of trial and error, but I got it to work. I am getting 10-bit 10, 10 4K when I ask for it out of this monitor. Um, but this monitor is basically not connected to the computer except for through DaVinci Resolve. That's very important. Um, let's get into it. So uh, what you got to do, you open Display Cal. And uh, again, we're, we're, I sort of walked you through it already. Yeah, so we're ready to go. So we're going to do calibrate and profile. And we're going to wait for a connection, 192.168.182.2002. Ironic considering it's already plugged in, so, but it is what it is. So we're going to go back to DaVinci Resolve, and you go to Workspace, and you go to uh, Monitor Calibration. And if you do it in any page other than the color page, it will not let you do it. It's just one of those annoying things about DaVinci Resolve's programming uh, they should fix that. I think that's a carryover from when it was mostly just color, but uh, it's not anymore. So now we're in the color page. Now we can go to Portrait Displays Calman and we can type in 
168.1.182, and it's a 20, uh, double O's, triple O two, whatever. So it's connected. So you gotta leave this box open because if you close it or disconnect it, then it will stop talking to it and it sucks. Okay, so wherever you wanna put this measurement area is gonna reflect here, and I'm gonna put it sort of up, up left so you guys can see it, how about? And we're gonna say start measurement, and we take the, the color monkey out, which is stuck. Uh, okay, and we're gonna hang it over, uh, and we want to open the color monkey because this probe is just for ambient light, so this is the actual thing with the felt, that's the optic. We're gonna hang it over and try to make it sit flat comfortably, which it doesn't always wanna do. There we go, that looks good enough. I don't put it down the middle just because, you know, it's not a perfect panel, so it doesn't light evenly perfectly, so I try to try to make it as imperfect as possible. And I just have this panel set to, like I reset it and it's just set to standard everything. That way I can go in and change the RGB values because that's what this thing is right here. Uh, this is going to, uh, once it's finished, uh, showing swatches, it's going to actually give me an RGB value and I can go into the monitor and adjust the RGB to make it match and illuminance, which is what I will do next. Start measurement. Okay, so we're close, but we're not great. Uh, it's basically saying it's twice as bright as it should be, which that blinding white blob definitely confirms that. And then the RGB is a little off. It looks like the green's a little down and the blue may be a little hot. So I'm gonna go into this. I can show you the I can show you the menu. The menus for each monitor are gonna be a little bit different. This one is particularly annoying because the buttons are just weird, but yeah. So we'll go to that. We'll go to we we're in standard. So I'm already messing up here. We need to go to I think it's under color temp. Standard mode. Okay, so in color temp, here we go. So we're just gonna change, we need to go up on the green and down the blue, so. so it looks like we're at 100 for everything, so we're going to we're gonna go down on blue. That's the first thing we'll do. Call it 85, and then we will go up to red. Bring the red up a little bit. Nope, We've gotta bring the green down. It's real janky, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's it's showing me green, so we're we're gonna call that good. And now we got to get the exposure, which should be under brightness. We're gonna bring the brightness down. Ninety-nine point seven five. Can't get much closer than that. Okay, so we did that. Although that messed up the RGB now, so we're going back in. Color, color temp. We need to add some blue, it looks like. Maybe we'll add a piece of red too. Nope, we can't. Take some green out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Ideally, you want to get it as close as possible, but the software will sort of cover for it. So now we got to go back up on... Uh, there we go. Okay, so we're all green again. I don't like that that blue's there, but it is what it is. So... So now it takes forever to calibrate. Uh, I told it to go as fast as possible, but it's it's still 
going to take a while. Uh, it is what it is. Okay, three LUT. So I'm just going to save it on the desktop and I will show you why in a second. So this is done. So that, that's done. We can, we can close slash disconnect. That's done. Um, we need to pull it up in uh, this lookup table list. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the LUT folder. That's the good cheat. So there it is. We're going to, I, I think I added monitor calibration. I don't think that's, I don't think that's an original thing. And so what we'll do is we'll go to uh, desktop and there's our 3D LUT, right? It's gonna be embarrassing if I don't know where I put it. Okay, so if you ever done like me and hit cancel instead of, uh, instead of save, what you can do is if you still have it, so if you see it right there, it still says it right there, you can just do install profile and you can save 3D LUT again and save it to the desktop and there you go, so. My embarrassment is your victory. Let's uh, go back to monitor calibration. We will drop this 3D LUT in there. There it is. Okay, we just got to go to update list now. And then video monitor lookup table, monitor calibration. There it is. And it should, if we look at this monitor here, it should jump to... There you go. There it is. Um, and it looks actually quite close to my regular monitor too. That's, that's nice. Um, part two is just calibrating the PC monitor. So uh, now that we've calibrated Resolve into DeckLink into HDMI into DisplayPort into this monitor, now we can just do the PC monitor, which is just graphics card into display. So same thing, except you don't have to use DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to leave it open just because, you know, the privacy reasons. And we're just going to go to the UA510, which is this Samsung monitor. We know it's Samsung, so there's the white LED. We're going to leave the calibration exactly the same. It's just going to be the whole same process. It's just going to still take the same amount of time. So, yep. All right, and as before, it's going to give me some RGB values, and this one has the little like joystick thing so as soon as it starts the measurement I can mess with the joystick you probably won't be able to see it we're pretty close looks like we need to bring the green down I think we nailed it. I think we nailed it. It could be because I've already calibrated this, but that looks pretty great to me. And so once again, we'll calibrate and take as long as it takes. So see you, see you when we're back to that. All right, we're back. So I don't know. Again, it's a dog reading poetry here, so I don't know. Um, it's acting like this monitor is actually better than that monitor. I, I don't know. Probably. Uh, install profile. Profile has been installed and activated. Cool. So the last thing to do here is uh, I noticed that uh, when you put in the lookup table for this monitor over here, so we can go no LUT and it'll go back to you know nothing. Um, what it'll actually do is it'll affect, it'll affect this too. So we'll go to lookup table, monitor calibration. Yeah, so. Uh, I don't know. So they affect each other. Um, I honestly don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I think for the sake of what we're doing, I don't need the color viewer to be affected. I don't know. Let me look, actually. Let me look at these two and see what 
Um, yeah, they look different. So let's just go ahead and turn it off. That actually looks... Honestly, I don't know. The, the one I'm supposed to choose is this one, so that's fine, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and just vary my instruction selection. I also noticed that scopes, it doesn't change uh, when you change stuff. So like we can open the waveform and we can jump back and forth and it'll, it'll not appreciably change at all. Yeah, so. Cool, so that's what it is. That's, uh, I wasn't sleeping, I swear. That's how you, that's how you calibrate your, your monitors. Um, honestly, I don't care that the monitor in front of me is perfect or not. It'd be nice if they were the same, like a one-to-one -one connection, but I, I just don't see that happening. Um, as long as this one is the one that we're calling the reference monitor, then sure. And then most importantly, you know, as long as the scopes are what they are and the, the skin tone line is correct for skin tone stuff, that's kind of what I care about the most. So. I don't know, how'd I do? Um, next time we'll do some color grading probably uh, because I still barely understand any of the, yeah, the monitoring, the calibrating stuff. Uh, catch you next time.